Welcome to Cartridge Talks, where my good friend Ryan Muckenhurt and I work to answer your deepest, darkest cartridge-related questions. In this episode, we're pitting two of your favorites, not four, against one another. Ryan, what are we working with? Before me, I have a Tika T3 chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, and on your side of the table, a Kimber Mountain Ascent chambered in 308 Winchester. This is Cartridge Talks. Oh! Oh! Now, before we get started, we better set some ground rules. I suppose you're right. We are working with two different rifle systems here. If everything could have been kept equal and we would have had the same exact guns, maybe we would have gotten away with this. But for this test, we are going to set a base weight of eight pounds per rifle. So when we're calculating figures like foot pounds of recoil energy, we can be as even Steven as possible. We're also gonna be using the box posted figures for muzzle velocity, ballistic coefficient, and grain weights for doing all of our tabulations for drop and drift. And we're gonna be using a product called Permagel, a ballistics gelatin. And while an imperfect solution, it's a consistent medium to test into. Well, now that we got that out of the way, let's head to the range and do some shooting. To the range, to the bench. Up first, we're gonna shoot the Tika T3, chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. 140 grain Federal Power Shock. Launch velocity of 2750. Should hit that block at 2546. Let's send one. All right, at the block, 25 and 9 16 inches of penetration. Pretty exceptional for a lead core bullet. All right, first up, out of one of the finest cartridges ever developed, the 308, we're running Federal's 150 grain power shocks. They've got a muzzle velocity of 2820, a 100 yard impact velocity of 2532. Let's press that trigger and see how it does. All right, solid work by the old 308. We're looking at 19 and 3 quarter inches of penetration with the 150 grain power shocks. All right. Running copper down the pipe now, we've got a federal loading here with the Barnes TSX, 130 grain projectile. 28 and a quarter launch velocity, 2603 at the block. All right, shot out, let's examine this wound cavity. Tremendous penetration, very characteristically copper. 36 and three quarter inches through the block, wow. Round two, literally, with the 308, we have Federal's Trophy Copper. These are 165 grainers with a muzzle velocity of 2,700 feet per second, a 100-yard impact velocity of 2,510. Let's send this bullet into the gel and have a look. All right, range is clear. Let's walk down and check out the block. All right, look at what we have here. The 165 grain Trophy Copper showing a lot more penetration, looking at 32 and a half inches. Now keep in mind the bullet construction and the range, but very impressive. And we're back. Now, before we give you the grand unveil and show you the ballistics gelatin blocks, we came up with a couple of categories that are gonna help us rank these two cartridges and hopefully get you into the correct selection. We've got shootability, accessibility, versatility, drop and drift, and terminal performance. So first on the list, shootability. Ryan, what the heck is shootability? It's a made up term. Oh, that sounds made up. Yeah. It's a term that we're using to try to describe and encapsulate how controllable that rifle is. How easy is it to shoot? How much recoil are you gonna have to manage? Give you a general picture of what that rifle is in the hand. Okay, it's sounding a lot less made up now. In fact, foot pounds of recoil. When we're looking at the 6.5 Creedmoor versus the 308, the 6.5 Creedmoor is coming to the table with 13.8 foot pounds of recoil with the factory ammunition that we tested. The 308 is coming to the table with 16.65 foot pounds of recoil. Again, that was with that eight pound baseline established. Well, Ryan, in your made up fantasy world of shootability, it sounds like the 6.5 Creed is gonna be more shootable. That's a fact. The next category, accessibility. How accessible are these cartridges to find on the marketplace? Exactly, Ryan. We're talking about accessibility in terms of total factory offerings available to the consumer. Now, we've done this by pulling the six major ammunition manufacturers in the U.S. So we're talking Hornady, Barnes, Federal, Winchester, Remington, and Nosler. Right, Ryan? Uh, 
We've come up with those numbers. After doing so, we've come up with 96 different offerings in the 308. The 65 Creed, in contrast, 56. Now, that's not terrible. The 308's been on the landscape since the 1950s. 65 Creedmoor just came around in 2007. It still makes the 308 the winner. In fact. So, Ryan, accessibility is great and it's important, but which one is more versatile? So within those factory loads, we're going to look at unique bullet styles. And I'm talking full metal jacket, soft point, match profile, homogenous or monolithic projectiles. The projectile itself offering the cartridge the ability to do certain things, right? Right. So we've got those numbers as well. 6.5 Creedmoor has 36 unique bullet styles and a weight range of 80 to 147 grains. So somewhere on that spectrum, you might find a bullet that's more appropriate for match shooting recreational target shooting, big game hunting, etc. 308 for contrast, 48 different unique styles of projectiles, 110 grain on the low end, 220 grain on the high end. 308? Yes, 308. I always wonder though, is the 6.5 doing the same with less? It's possible. We also have to remember, again, 308 has been on scene for decades longer. We've had more time to develop projectiles for different needs. The cartridge is also widely accepted for military use and law enforcement use and has been long heralded as an exceptional target cartridge too for competitive shooters. So at the end of the day, I think we can say the 308 is more versatile. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. All right, shootability, accessibility, and versatility aside, we know how many there are, we know what they can do. How does this thing perform downrange? Sounds like it's time for a little D&D. &D. And we're not talking Dungeons and Dragons. We're talking drop and drift. Now we've tabulated these drop and drift numbers using the federal power shocks that we have on the table here. So in the 308, we have 150 grainers. In the 6.5, we have 140 grainers. We've tabulated our wind values with a 10 mile per hour full value crosswind. Now all the numbers we're about to go through can be a little dry. So we're gonna utilize our graphics team to spice it up a little bit. Now considering all these things at 500 yards, as you like to say, Ryan, because nobody cares about what happens at 200 yards, the 6.5 Creed has 10.5 MOA of drop and 3.91 MOA of wind drift. In contrast, the 308 has 11.66 MOA of drop and 5.73 MOA of wind drift. Not as good as the 6.5 by the numbers. I guess we got to give it to it then, Mark. 6.5 Creedmoor, drop and drift, definitive winner. But wait, there's more. Now, Ryan, all these numbers are fine and dandy, but let's put them into practice and see what happens on impact with some gel. And cue the gels, ladies and gentlemen. Before us, we have these 100 pound blocks of permagel ballistics gelatin. On my block, I was firing the 140 grain Federal Power Shock, 6.5 Creedmoor. And what we're gonna look at is depth of penetration, wound cavity, and any secondary fragmentation that we might have going on. Now, with a 100 yard impact on this, I managed 25 and 9 16 inches of penetration. I have that very characteristic soft point mushrooming. We're doing everything as expected here. Great wound cavity, not a ton of fragmentation or secondary projectiles. It looks textbook. It looks like it should have done exactly what it did. Overall impressive performance, right? Yes. Now I'm shooting the same bullet, but I'm shooting the 150 grain power shocks out of the 308 here. And I'm looking at 19 and three quarter inches of penetration. Uh, not necessarily the result that I expect it, expected with more mass. Sure, and I think that's a function of sectional density. The 6.5 is gonna have higher sectional density. It's going to penetrate a little bit better. Interestingly enough, with that more mass, I do feel like I have a larger permanent wound cavity. Yep, I think that's that frontal surface area of that bullet being 30 caliber on entrance, opening up, we've just got more tissue, or in this case, more material that we're displacing. Yeah, a little bit more disruption there. Mm -hmm. uh, they both did different things really well. Yeah, I think so. They both killed the deer at the end of the day. Agreed. But in this test, we're looking at penetration overall as one of the, the major metrics of this. I think 6.5 takes it in the lead bullet. Interesting, and I'd say effective results with the lead core power shocks. But let's take a look at their copper counterparts. Mm. All right, copper projectiles. Mark, you know I am a huge fan of copper. I talk about it all the time. 
we're seeing wildly different performance. We're getting massive penetration. 6.5 Creedmoor, 130 grain Barnes TSX loaded in the Federal Premium, 36 and three quarter inches of penetration. Incredible. It, it's impressive. Yes. I'm running the uh, Federal Trophy Copper 165 grainers out of the 308. Similar projectile, but a little bit different. I'm looking at 32.5 inches of penetration. Now I will say textbook expansion. Uh, lost the tip uh, nearly immediately on impact. I think that's pretty normal. Couple flakes came off, nothing of note. I can't believe I'm really even noting it right now. I'd say it, it did a really good job. Yeah, and when we're talking about terminal performance and then versatility and capability of a cartridge, like both of these, a bullet selection can make or break the hunt, right? If we're gonna be hunting large cervids or bears or things that have a lot of heavy muscle tissue, heavy hide or bone, selecting a bullet like the Barnes TSX or the Trophy Copper can rejuvenate the performance of an otherwise seemingly anemic cartridge. I mean, this is wild performance. You know, it's done a really good job. I think one thing to keep in mind when looking at, say, you know, a copper projectile or maybe your traditional cup and core is how it expands and what it needs to expand. Sure. These impacts, yes, quite impressive. This is at 100 yards. I mean, you're full steam ahead, right? Yep. Maybe you need to consider other things if your impacts are going to be further than 100 yards. Like muzzle velocity. Bullets like this, very tough constructed projectiles, do take a bit more force to open, deploy, and expand reliably. And so you want to study the ballistics tables and look at that minimum velocity to initiate mechanical expansion when selecting a projectile like this. Overall, I do like it. Wild. It looks like the 6.5 Creedmoor did edge out the 308 a little bit here. I mean, it, it did it again, and I think it's a we can attribute that to the same things we did with the uh, the power shocks. All right, let's 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 put a bow on this and figure out who actually won this contest. Let's tally the votes. All right, so shootability, 6.5 Creedmoor. Accessibility and versatility, 308 Winchester. Drop and drift, 6.5 Creedmoor. Terminal ballistics, 6.5 Creedmoor. Three to two favor, 6.5 Creedmoor. No! It's kind of hard to believe, Ryan. The 308 has been around forever. It has more bullet options. It's got a larger bullet palette, uh, more factory options. I mean, everybody loves it. I love it. But I love it didn't win. I love 6.5 Creedmoor too. I mean, at the end of the day, they're both excellent cartridges. I think, like we always say. It depends on how you intend to use it. I think there's definitely situations where the 6.5 is going to edge out the 308. Yep. But I think there's some situations where the 308 is going to edge out the 6.5. Keeping all that in mind, at the end of the day, they're somewhat interchangeable in my true, opinion. True, true. Absolutely. But the tally is the tally. 6.5 Creed. Boats are in. Boats are in. All right, that's it for this episode of Cartridge Talks. If you enjoyed what you saw here but are craving just a little bit more, tune into the Vortex Nation podcast. Mark and I are going to dive deeper into the gel, unpack this experiment a little bit further, and maybe uncover some more truths, myths, facts, or otherwise. If you've got any questions or comments, drop them below. We'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next episode of Cartridge Talks.